Afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up review on this M6 Scout rifle by Springfield Armory. I've had this one for probably five years. I did a video on it about four years ago. I wanted to do a follow-up video today, like a review, to show you a little bit more about this gun and talk a little bit about the history of this gun. And then also tell you where I have seen these for sale at in case you want to know where to buy one yourself. But I thought we'd go through some of the workings of this gun, a little bit of the nomenclatures on it, and then how it shoots and what ammunition you can use with this gun. And then we demonstrate a couple times from about 20, 25 yards. Stay with me, guys. We'll get started. Afternoon, guys. Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I just wanted to have a little short discussion about kit mentality and talk about understanding that our kit is dictated by seasons and environments as well as personal preference. But the main thing I want to talk about really is understanding our meat gathering resources and what we need to put in our kit depending on the environment, the seasonality, and our personal preference for what type of game we're good at catching. And that, it, that makes a big part of your decision when it comes to your kit because you may be a really really good fisherman but you may not be that good of a hunter and in summer months when you're able to fish very easily fishing may be a very viable option while someone else their better option may be hunting things that are very prevalent in the spring and summer like birds and things like that and small mammals for me <clears throat> I would probably do both now I've had a few questions about this rifle and this is the M6 Scout by Springfield Armory this is a camouflage edition of this weapon. They quit making this weapon in 2008. Um, it is an over-under 410-22. It breaks open. It breaks in half. It has one pin in the middle that breaks in half. So you can put it into a backpack or whatever the case may be. It is probably the only weapon that was ever made that basically is a solid steel construction. There's no wood furniture on this thing. There's no plastic furniture on this thing. The only piece of ABS on here is the magazine, which is in the butt stock. In between two pieces of metal here, there's a plastic magazine in here, basically that will hold 15 rounds of 22 long rifle and four rounds of 410 shotgun. So the ability to carry ammo with this gun makes it very good as well as the versatility of being 410 and 22. So you have rifle and shotgun, rifle for small game, shotgun for birds, shotgun slugs for larger game. It has sights on it that flip both directions for a V-sight for the shotgun and a peep sight for the rifle. It has a very good safety system on it in that it has a turning left latch in the middle that puts it on safe so it cannot fire. And then it, you turn it to the left and push it down for the lower barrel or the shotgun barrel and pull it up to fire the upper barrel or the rifle barrel. Again, if you put it in the center and turn it sideways and lock it, it cannot fire. It has a very large trigger well in it that's made for shooting this weapon if you have gloves on. So it's made for multiple environments. If you were hunting with this in the winter and you had big gloves on, you can get into this paddle style trigger and pull it to shoot it. The barrels are separated. I've wrapped these barrels in paracord. It's a very simple process of going in between the barrels and wrapping the paracord and then wrapping around the two barrels in this one section where I put my hand. They actually showed pilots how to do this with parachute cord when they use these in the military. These originally were made for pilot survival rifles that went under the cockpit seat so that they'd have a rifle to use in a survival scenario. They originally were made in 410 shotgun and 22 Hornet. And the reason they used 22 Hornet was for personal defense and also its ability to take medium sized game like pigs and things like that out of the jungle. The civilian versions were 22 long rifle over 410. I have three of these now. I've had five of them in my possession in the last several years. Um, I bought one for my father for Father's Day. I gave one to Steve Critter Davis, a very, very good friend of mine. And I sold one to one of my instructors last week, and I still have two. One is Iris's and one is mine. Hers is a black, solid black matte finish, like a Parkerized version. Mine is camouflage. This is the most rare version, is the camouflage version. They also made them in stainless steel. I looked on gunbroker.com today, and there were four of them on gunbroker.com. The reserve was not met on one that had a 450 bid. There were two others that were over 600, and one that was about 550, I believe. None of them have been sold at that point. 
So it depends on the caliber of the gun, whether it's 22 Hornet, 20 over 410, or whether it's 22 long rifle. It depends on what finish the gun has on it as to the rarity of the gun. And some of these were made in the Czech Republic and not Springfield Armory. So that makes a difference as well as far as how much they're worth. So I wanted to cover that with you guys real quick today. And we're going to be shooting this in a lot of our small game hunting videos this season. So you're going to get plenty of chance to see it in action. It is one of my absolute favorite survival rifles. Only for its versatility and its durability. You know, I hear, I hear a lot of people talk about the AR-7. The one with the hollow plastic stock. I would not use that thing for, for nothing. If somebody gave it to me, I wouldn't use it. They're semi-automatic. I hear that they jam very hard. Um, with without using the right ammunition in them. I also understand that the plastic stocks tend to break on them. Why would I want to go through that in the wild just to have something that would fold up inside of itself, just take the barrel off and put it in the, in the butt stock? I don't want that. I can break this down in half and it's solid steel. You're not going to destroy this. And that's what it's about when you're talking about long-term sustainability is how durable is that piece of equipment. You're not going to destroy this thing. There's very few moving parts to tear up. It's almost like a single shot 12 gauge. It's pretty much bulletproof. Now, here's the thing, you know, now that we have this 410 capability of the 209 shotgun primer to make a muzzle loader with 410s, now I have the ability to shoot 22 long rifle, 410s in any configuration, and black powder out of the same weapon. Makes it even more versatile still. As versatile as the 12 gauge shotgun, to me, no, especially with subcaliber adapters. But as far as the size, the durability of this gun, it's one of the number one survival guns that will ever be, and they're just hard to find, that's all. But you can find them, but plan to spend at least $600, maybe more, to find one. If you get... Just a few thoughts on kit mentality. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today. We're going to be doing a lot more fishing in the near future. We're going to be doing a lot of hunting this season. Um, some bird seasons open up pretty quickly here in Ohio. Rabbit season, or squirrel season opens up after that. Rabbit, deer open up very soon after that. Traffic season opens up as well. So we're going to be doing a whole lot of that. And I would urge you to refer to my past videos for some of those questions because I get a lot of questions about will you go out and shoot a squirrel and cook it. Well, I've done that at least two or three times on video already. And I would encourage you to look at the over 750 videos that I have already before you ask questions like will I do this or will I do that because chances are I've probably already done it. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for all my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.